it's been a, an exceptional year where you know every living being has experienced something different. Uh, it's a totally new environment, new atmosphere, new experiences. But that doesn't, you know, that also gives us a time as the year is ending, uh, time to reflect where, what has God done in our life, what have we accomplished, and where do we go from here? So I think this is uh, what, what prompted me to uh, talk on this topic. And also it's been uh, a leading from the previous topic. I talked about slowing down, right? You, even if when you do reflection, you have to slow down. Without being slowing down, you can't do reflection anyway. You can't be running and thinking about meditating on God. You probably knock into something or somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> so that's why. So thank you. I'm, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Where am I? Where am I? What is happening here? Sorry. Give me a second, guys. I just uh, okay. Okay, why is it? Oh, sorry. I'm just giving me a second. Carrying the wrong one. Yeah, carrying the wrong one. I'm just giving me a second. I'm just sharing a static picture. Okay, there we go. All right, that's better. Okay. Praise God. We are on actually part 16. Wow, this is a, a big accomplishment for us. And uh, once again, yes, let me start with a prayer. Father, we thank you once again for this evening and uh, with, uh, for bringing us together today, Lord, for this uh, message. And once again, Lord, I just commit this, this message into your hands, Lord. You just use me as a vessel. Speak through me and whatever is being spoken here, let it be from you and you alone. And let it be edifying and be a blessing and will bring peace and joy and, and into each one, of us love, each one of us loves lives, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the topic is self-reflection. And uh, of course, we all know what I'm going to talk about the next. <clears throat> so... We are all bona fide. What does bona fide mean? Uh, you know, it's, we are genuine, we are authentic, and uh, we are endorsed. So everything that we do in, in for, you know, as a believer of Christ, because we all know that Christ lives in us anyway, because I love Galatians 2.20, where Jesus, you know, uh, Paul talks about, you know, we are crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live in my faith in, in, you know, in the son of God, son of man, uh, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, so we know, sometimes we look up and we raise, raise our hands, uh, you know, praying towards the heavens, but we know even that that is symbolic when we, when we know we are always addressing uh, the, spirit, the spirit of God that's inside us through the Holy Spirit. Eh? Amen? So, so that is a, a unique thing for us as believers. That we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, which you know, if you're not a believer, you you're missing out on that precious gift. So that's why we need to understand, recognize that the moment we say we are children of God, that Jesus is my Lord, we need to be genuine about it. You know, the God doesn't want us to be lukewarm. Even in the Book of Revelation, to one of the churches, Jesus talks, "You're neither cold or hot for me. I'm not interested in hot or lukewarm. I want you to be hot for me." And that's why we're talking about heart and we need to be authentic because people outside are watching us. So they need to see our yes be yes, our no be yours and be endorsed because we already endorsed with the blood of Jesus. Right? So that's what it is. So Jesus showed the way to authenticity. He fulfilled his mandate. The apostles followed, multiplied and fulfilled and we do likewise as his ambassadors. Amen? And because we are ambassadors for Christ. And uh, so today's topic is on self-reflection. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a follow-through from what we talked about the last time about slowing down. And as the year is coming to an end before Christmas, I think it's a good time to bring this topic up to reflect where we are and what, what, where are we going from here and what God is expecting from us. So the foundation scripture, uh, there's a lot of scripture. I've been searching for the right scripture. This is a challenging. So the one I settled for is Psalm 139. It says, search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. 
and see if there is any wicked or hurtful ways in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Lead me in the way of everlasting. I think that, that's basically what sort of uh, I felt is most relevant because we are to be led by him into the everlasting because this is a journey that we're walking through on this earth. But our journey destination is obviously heaven. Uh, if, we are, if, we, if we leave this earth before God, Jesus comes. Otherwise, we are raised up with him, right? So this, either way, we are working towards that purpose, and that's what it's all about. So in Bonaparte 15, <clears throat> that was, excuse me, the last part, I talked about slowing down to grow. And I, and I like what Jesus, uh, Ruben says sometimes, is rest and then to go, right? Rest and go, rest and go. It's like coming to a traffic light, stopping for a moment, pausing there, and then when the light comes green, you just move on. So it's, you know, so it is a, God gives us a signal that we need that those red lights in our lives so that we can slow down, pause for a while, to reflect what God is telling us, teaching us, and then re, re, you know, regenerate it and then move forward again, strengthened. And I like what even Jesus did in his early part of his ministry, the same thing. You know, once he's finished, you know, finished in Mark, I think it's Mark, I can't remember which chapter it is. Uh, that when after his whole days of uh, ministering to people, he you know he rests next morning, early morning, he rises up and goes to a quiet place to pray and and to and to be restored, so that he can actually move on to the next level, next stage of his uh, of what his assignment is. So self reflection can only happen when we slow down and take stock of where we are in every aspect of our lives. It's not just one aspect. Sometimes the problem with the worldly system is they people they they focus on certain things of their career or money or job, uh, and then they neglect everything else in life. But in kingdom, God's kingdom, it's a wholesome. It's about every aspect of our life that we need to observe and take stock. So we need to slow down, check where we are in every aspect of our life, take stock, and then see where we are and what we need to do next. Right. So self-reflection is uh, using the word of God draws us closer to the truth. You know, this is something that, you know, the leaders will understand this where, you know, we talk about the circle, uh, you know, where we continuously you know, medit think about the word, what is happening to us and search for the truth from the word of God, constantly looking for the word of God. What is the word, word of God tells us? What is the word of God is telling me? And when we align ourselves with the word of God, initially, they, you know, we have facts, not the truth. So we need to move away from facts to truth. And then when we get in line with the word of God, then we begin to see the true transformation in our lives. Okay. So it's to, it's a, you know, reflection is about drawing closer to the truth, which is the word of God, which gives us greater wisdom and growth, maturity. Right. So, you know, like Psalm 19 says, teach, so teach us to number our days that we may get us a heart of wisdom. Right, days are is always precious to us because we don't have days is something is a limited commodity in our lives, so we don't want to waste days, you know, doing the wrong things, making mistakes over and over again, and you know, ignoring the purpose of our purpose on this earth. So it is precious. So that is why you know we need to be constantly uh, reflecting where are we, how fast can how can we change, how can we advance, uh, because God is waiting to take us to the next level. And it's okay. God understands we make mistakes. Even I believe strongly in our book of life in heaven, God knows where, when are we making mistakes, what mistakes we're going to make. So it's only factored for those things. Right? But the key things, he says, what are you going to do next? How are you coming with me now? Are you going to grow out of that? Right? And that's only going to happen when we slow down and reflect, do some self-reflection. Okay? So only through growth can we consistently achieve our goals. See, a lot of people set goals. Right? Goals, it is not the purpose. Go, you know, if you really achieve uh, growth every day in your life, your goals are automatically achieved. From, it's, a, it's, a, it's a byproduct. It is not something that you focus on. Right? Some people send goals, say, oh, I want to make X million dollars. I want to be this, that. But then you have seen, you're focusing on the only one or two aspects. <clears throat> and it is a selfish motivation because that is more outward looking rather than inward looking. Right, so but <clears throat> we need to be uh, consistently to achieve our goals through. Uh, it is you know it is about partnering with God both from a spiritual and personal aspect. 
So the deeper we grow with God, the stronger our foundation is in our lives. And the better we are equipped to face the world, uh, face whatever God puts in our path, and to be a blessing to others. Because end of the day, growing is not just for us. It's growing is to be, as we grow, we are to be a blessing to others. So we others will be drawn to us so we can be a blessing to them. Self-reflection is done must be done regularly. <clears throat> will expedite our growth and achieve. You know, I suggest if you're really looking at self-reflection, do it at least once a week. Take a half an hour or one hour off or once a month uh, to do some reflection. Because if you leave it to end of the year, you have lost opportunity. Because what? If you have done the reflection in, in a, in a, in a in, let's say, in a monthly basis, you would have identified where you were going wrong and you could have corrected that earlier and you would have gained growth in your life, maybe the months ahead leading to the end of the year. But if you leave it to end of the year, you have lost an opportunity of growth because you're only identifying that at a much later stage in life. So don't leave self-reflection to only end of the year. It's got to be an intentional habit. You can either do it weekly or we can do it on a monthly basis <clears throat> or fortnightly, whichever is, but it's got to be consistent. You've got to make it consistent. Just like what God says, have a Sabbath once a week. Right, the, the purpose of that Sabbath is also reflection, self-reflection. You know, appreciating God and self-reflection to say, Lord, okay, what have I done this year, this week? What have I achieved? What have I accomplished for myself, my family, my God, uh, myself, you know, for somebody else? So it is a, a, a quality, wholesome reflection. So don't leave it to end of the year because you're going to lose a lot of opportunity that God has prepared for you, right? But the earlier you catch, you know, you start doing it, the faster you catch the worm, right? So that's what it's all about. So it actually, it was small increments, you know, when you start doing that on a weekly basis, then it gets, you know, if you go, you, you slow, small, small amount, it leads to multiplication, becomes mastery, and then it's like compounding. You know, in investment, we talk about compounding. If you put $1,000 away when you say 20 years old, and if you get 20% return, and every year you just keep on adding the profit to the, to the capital, in 20 years' time, you're worth about a million dollars, that $1,000. So likewise, when we weekly start doing self reflection, and we even if we add one percent or even a, a drop of achievement in our life, going from that reflection, that one drop is going to be an ocean in a couple of years, right? So it is very important that we need to make this intentional habit. Even start journaling. You know, today you can either you got mobile phones, you can write notes in your computer, in your notebook, your laptop, your you know, take notes and, and you reflect on that. What okay, this is what I felt, this is what I was, this is what I was going to God is telling me to do. Where am I after that? So you're consistently uh, you know measuring yourself against your past reflections. So you are going to grow exponentially. And sadly, <clears throat> most don't as do this as because they see it as not urgent. Right? Because you're so busy with other things, you know, you got emails running around, family, children. Our work and we neglect the most important part of our life, which is self-reflection. Because if you miss that, you are going to miss out on growth. You're going to miss out on opportunity that God is putting in front of you. So it is not an option for you or for all of us. Self-reflection is not an option, but it is a mandatory part of our life. Just like the reason why God created Sabbath is also for the, the same purpose. Right, to be able to reflect, rest, reflect, and see where we are, what God has done, how we have blessed Him, and what is it that is giving us as a next step in our life. So I hope this makes sense to you guys. Okay. Now, you know, I, I call this wheel of life. There are seven areas we need to grow. I mean, Ruben sometimes put eight, nine. It's the same thing, but it just we break it up into smaller components. Okay. So I've just put it at a higher level. So there are seven areas where we need to grow our, you know, our capacity and we need to steward it well. And this has got to be intentional. And uh, so it is called the wheel of life. Okay. So if you look at it, I put it, you know, it doesn't matter, but because I put it spiritual, family, family could be, your, you know, husband and wife, uh, children, you know, your other relatives in the family and so on, career or business. If you're running, if I want, you know, how do you grow a career or business? A fam finance, finance is very important because uh, you know on earth we need money to live on, 
So, but we need to also make sure that we are good stewards of the finances that God gives us so that by as we grow, we can start building up uh, wealth so that, you know, we are in a position to bless others while we are being blessed. And as we retire, we are in a position to be self-sustaining without having to worry about our finances. Physical is because, because we, you know, we, we got to be fit, we got to be healthy. So it's important what kind of food we're eating, you know, how do we exercise? Uh, because, the, you know, the, we are the, supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we need to be clean, healthy, and, and, and strong. So this is important. Intellect is where we have to constantly, the world is always changing. If you stay behind, you're going to be left behind. If you stand, so it's changing. So we need to be keep abreast of what's going on. But doesn't mean we take on board what we see, everything. We just need to differentiate between facts and truth and constantly grow and learn as we go along. It's an ongoing journey for life. Social is where we talk about uh, meet friendship. You know, how what kind of friends do you keep? Because it's got to be iron sharpening iron. So the people that you mix around can either bring you up, lift you up, or keep you down. Right? So again, these are things, areas that we need to make sure that we, we have, uh, you know, wholesome uh, growth, growth uh, and uh, steward our lives very well. The reason I put exercise there is because I want you to take note, take note of this picture for a moment. We're going to ask you to uh, do some exercise on this later. So, choose, you know, three areas that we want you to choose. And, and to work on for the next year. So just, I will also put this picture during the exercise, but just remember this, speak of some ideas. And the scripture words that I use here is, beloved, I pray that in all aspects, respects, you may prosper and be in good health, just as our, your soul prospers, right? So it's a, it's a wholesome thing. God, God wants us to have a wholesome, you know, God doesn't want us to just pick one particular area and try and, you know, uh, flourish in that area. And, you know, there are people we know they're very good in careers who become CEOs or high commanding jobs. But, you know, they have massive problems with marriages. You know, they're not good financial stewards. They got all kinds of problems. Right. So it is about wholesomeness. God is a God of wholesomeness. And it's got to be you can't just take one and neglect the other. It's got to be complete. That's why it's called the wheel of life. <clears throat> Throw off your old sinful nature and your former ways of life. Ephesians 4.20. So does God expect us to work on growth and self-improvement? Yes. But just as examining ourselves is futile. You know, if we keep us on self-focusing on our side, our self, that means outward focusing, not inward focusing, you're going to be defeated. You're not going to go far because you're going to be stressed out. You're going to be exhausted in soon in life because there's no fulfillment in your life. Right. So the Bible's part is to change, to turn away from self and focus on Christ. Is everything is going to be centered on Christ? Because we talk about bona fide believers, we have to be authentic. That means we need to be more and more like Christ each day. Paul says, "Well, we all, with unveiled face, beholding as a mirror of the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord." Okay, and that's what it's all about. We need to be constantly. Uh, you know, focusing, uh, you know, looking in the mirror and, and just see where do we see, where do we see next? Where do we go next? Where do we go next? And it's all based on the word of God. You can't just do it in the flesh, right? So it's, it's about asking ourselves, how well am I doing in every area of my life <clears throat> and comparing it against the word of God? Because the Bible has all the answers for every aspect of our life. You know, the seventh wheel of life said every area of that God has answers for us. Every area God has answered for us. He created us. He put us on this earth. He knows how we need to flourish, how we can flourish, how he can bless us. So don't do things in isolation, but it's always going back to the word of God. Okay, if you're having, you know, marriage issues, okay, what am I doing wrong? What does the Bible talk about? If as a husband, as a wife, as a, you know, how do I take care of my children? Everything that answers there, right? And when we go back to the truth, you're going to find peace that's going to be harmony at all, right? The same thing with finances. You know, we, we've done this uh, kingdom finance training uh, over the last, this year, I think three times we've run the course, right? We, has, you know, it shocks us, shocks us the amount of poor people, you know, Christians who are unequal, unprepared for financial freedom or independence, right? And uh, it is, you know, why? Because there's been ignorance about stewardship. Right. So it's just, I'm just looking at, I'm not blaming anybody here, but I'm just pointing out 
that these are facts. These are the truth that we are beginning to discover. Right? So God isn't interested in improved flesh outwardly. You know, in his eyes, improved flesh is still flesh. You can't, you're not going far away. Right? You're still there. But then this is where in the worldly system, they give you all kind of motivational training, motivational courses. They say you must push, you know, you can do it. You can achieve this, accomplish. But you're doing on in the flesh and you're going to be burned out sooner or later. Right? So he is in the character transformation business, not the self-improvement business. Because when God comes into you, he transforms you. He takes away the old and puts the new into you. According to his DNA now, it's no longer your DNA, but Jesus is putting his DNA into your life. And he's going to transform you and change you to be where he wants you according to the plan that God has for you. Right? But it means we need to set aside the time. All our self-improvement strategies can't transform our old self-nature. Only God by the Spirit can make us more Christ-like. Just, I'm just repeating the same scripture verse that we talked about earlier, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Right? Now, it doesn't happen because of our, our effort, greed, but it is because of His grace, because that's His promise that God has given us. It's His grace. Right? We can't do everything by the flesh and declare, claim glory. Right? We can't win. We can't do it by ourselves. It is the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God that is going to work through us and transform our character. Right? So God's ultimate plan is to replace our flesh and to give us, you and me, a new heavenly body. That's his whole purpose. He's preparing us on this earth, a journey to be where he wants us to be with him. You know, I love this, you know, one of the songs, one of the songs we sing about in my father's house as a place for me. You know, and I am a child of God. Now, if we want to, you know, if he's already given us a place, you know, how wonderful that God. So what is he asking? He said, hey, okay, I'm, I've already prepared a place for you and I want you to be transformed in your character, in your behavior, in your, the, your way you think to be ready. The time that comes, you are going to be welcome into my home, into my house. And that takes effort. Right? God says, I have opened the doors for you. I've given you everything you need in your hands, but you need to take possession and run with it and make it happen. That is why the self-reflection, the quiet time spending with God, reflecting on what you're doing, what you're accomplishing, what are your next steps. It is an effort that we need to do, but effort through Him, asking the Holy Spirit to lead us in this matter, not reading some uh, motivational books and getting pumped up. Okay? It's not what happened. Right, so my eyes are over the Lord and only he will release my feet from the snare. This is David talking, okay? And he said, the Lord wants total and radical replacement of the old with the new. God wants 100% makeover, right? It is not, he's not going to be satisfied just doing 50% with you, 60% or 90. God is a God of perfection. But we need to work with him. If we don't work with him, nothing is, he can't, you know, he can't work with us. So we've got to step out in faith and accept him. And say, yes, Lord, I am coming forward. I am ready. I'm yielding myself to you, right? And you do the work and I'm going to work with it. I'm going to partner with you, right? David understood how this principle worked. He said, my eyes are forever are ever on the Lord. For only he will release my feet from the snares, right? So whatever mistakes we made, it's like God says, don't worry about it. I'm here to fix it. No, I've already known that you're going to do it. But I'm here to fix you uh, with grace and with mercy and with love. There is no condemnation. Right? And again, David said, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. I will not be shaken. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Hallelujah. Right? That's why Jesus God said, you know, he is a man after my heart. Right? We need to run after God's heart. Right? When we run after God's heart, it's, it's, it pleases him and he's ever ready to take you on board and say, I am going to make a new person. You are the clay. I am the potter. I am going to mold you and make you into a better, better pot. Right? And you are going to be worthy 
of you know of my calling as my son or my daughter and that's what god wants us to do and it takes that self reflection is important otherwise you're not going to accomplish that right so our job is simple right though not easy right is to ignore our fleshly cravings and stay focused on jesus because his job is to transform us by his mighty power right so that moment of self reflection is actually say i yielding god myself yourself to god and say lord i'm coming here this week this is what i've achieved this is what i accomplished uh show me where i can improve right guide me and he's going to do that for you because it pleases his heart but we need to ask if we don't ask he's not going to come in he's not going to help you so god you know god's way eliminates the paralysis of self analysis we cannot even don't forget about doing self analysis right we are flesh you know the moment you start doing self analysis all the wicked thought evil thought everything will keep coming in by commanding us to you know but to forget us completely is to stop dwelling on our imperfections and get involved in the lives of others we need to when we get involved in other people's life now we are taking the attention away from us and we are able to focus on what god wants us to do with others and in that process we grow because god is using us and transforming us like now we you know like we say like we myself we you know we all of us you know we we travel countries you know it's not for our purpose we are not going to that because we want to improve ourselves right it is we are going there to empower people equip people in that process we get empowered we, we get renewed we grow and we you know we are even more equipped to do even greater things for the lord right so it is about yielding ourselves it's about reflecting and i like when we when we come back normally uh, even when we are in overseas in that country we, we before we leave we sit together and do a wrap up and say okay what are the takeaways what have we learned what have we accomplished what have we achieved what can we do better right so we are doing an assessment a self reflection there as a group to see what can we do better what have we done well what we could do improve and that's that's the form of reflection that we need to do and as we continue to do that right we will start and even to you know now here as implementers you know we get together once a while you know even this in covid time we come on zoom at least once every two months we spend a couple of hours uh saying okay what have we accomplished what we can do how we can we improve and what we have done so we are constantly doing self reflection and we are putting it into action we are not just saying it and not doing it okay so similar thing you can do it by yourself you can do it together with your spouse right if you got you know it's even better there, there is a moment you need to be by yourself but it's also good when you have a scout together with your spouse because each of you can examine each other where you are and strengthen each other help each other to grow right that's why god has put us here together in relationship because you're one in the flesh you're not two different person anymore right so some ways that we can overcome the flesh i just put some some examples here acknowledge god's grace and see ourselves as righteous in christ so there's no condemnation right fix our eyes on jesus always constantly look to him for what is he is telling us to do shun obsessive self focus right keep away from self condemnation don't look at the regrets past regrets because the moment you dwell on regrets you you know you're not going to go forward you're going to be caught up in that that you know that uh, mud uh that is going to keep you stuck in the in that old place you know serve god by serving others as i just said but you know by serving others you are going to grow by yourself these just some examples i'm putting there you know uh as what you can do and you know the key thing is when we do these things as isaiah 58 says your light will rise in the darkness the lord will guide and strengthen you i love this scripture you know the light will rise in the darkness so wherever there's darkness in your life is going to be replaced by light because you are allowing god to come and work into your life change your transform you and change you and the, he will guide you and he will strengthen you so why is self reflection important okay vital part of life without self reflection we become disconnected with ourselves we just don't know we just rolling along rolling along with no purpose in life no accomplishments whatsoever right so we need to be become disconnected from with ourselves god and others we just living in a world of delusion you know we that's what it is right 
we get lost and diverted from our vision and purpose. Because we are so distracted with busy, 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 and you, you know, you have lost your well, even when God is screaming at you, this is what I want you to do, you're not hearing. Right? Because you're not scrolling down, you're not waiting for the Lord, you're not reflecting on what's happening, you're not hearing him. You know, today somebody I was listening to a video recording, you know, the guy was he's been to heaven. God has taken him to heaven a few times, right? And he was saying, actually, the angels, they of the speed with which they work, we cannot see them. They are far, they're like a speed of light. Sometimes they intentionally slow themselves so that we can see them. Right? So even God puts those slowness into the angels so that they, it can, when we see angels, that is, a, is such an encouragement for us. Right, that, that God is talking to us, that God is hearing us, God is present in this meeting, this present in, in this whatever we're doing. Right, He even slows His angels down. Right, so why can't we slow down? Right, so these are things that we need to be, you know, God, God is always just wait, talking to us, you know, that is, He's always ready to. Open his mouth and, you know, I think the problem with most of us, the moment he opens his mouth, he shuts down because he said, ah, this guy's not hearing me. He's, he's so busy with other things. So I'm not wasting my energy with him. <laughs> right? So we need to understand that God is waiting to bless us, to grow us, to make us better so that we can do greater work for his kingdom and to be a blessing to those God wants us to bless. Right? In self-reflection, we allow our hearts and mind to think and process according to God's word. You know why I put unlike yoga? Because yoga, the human Western way, Eastern way, they teach you form of meditation is to, to empty your mind. Yoga tells you to empty your mind. Right? So you just go blank. That's a form of relax, relaxation and some meditation to do. But no, for us, God is the opposite. He said, oh, fill your mind with my word. Fill your mind with my word. You know, and there's going to be so much of joy. There's so much of infilling I'm going to give you. There's so much of energy and life I'm going to bring into you. Right? So that is, that's why we're totally opposite ends. We pay attention to the things beneath the surface of our lives, our feelings. So when you start reflecting, we are not no longer looking at the surface of life, but with our feelings. We start questioning our motives, what we're doing, what, why we're doing this, why we're doing this, and so on, and the, and, and the frustrations we feel. So it is good to have feel that frustration. It's good to show, feel that feeling because now you're ready to say, okay, where do I need to see? Where is I'm feeling the friction in my life? Where is that anger coming from? Whatever it is, now you're in a position to address that and solve the problem. You know, last Sunday, I think it was, you know, Papa Luke was talking about where, you know, the problems come from, what, what are the causes of problems in life? Because, you know, what we've gone through, difficulties in childhood, we've gone through in so many ways, depression comes in, anxiety comes in, sickness comes in. Why? Because we have suppressed, 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 suppressed. We don't let it come out. But when we do self-reflection, we release all these things, anger, bitterness, resentment, forgiveness, you are going to grow much faster now. You're going to be Replacing the old self with God's, you know, with a new mind, with a new, with a new mindset. All right. So when we make space for self-reflection, there we will discover authentic connections of our soul and to God. That's where the connection comes in. You know, when we start doing self-reflection, we're actually connecting with God and say, Lord, yes, tell me, show me, teach me, where am I, what I need to do, where do I go from here? And that's, you know, that's when we see the growth happening in our lives. And, you know, finally, I just want to close with this as outcomes, right? What are the outcomes? You know, habitual self-reflection helps us to lead, lead an extraordinary life. Because you're constantly growing, 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 growing. There is no limit. And, you know, not by might, but by spirit. Right? So habitual, make it a habit. You will start leading. I promise you, in what you are today, in one year time, you will be amazed where God is going to take you. And the achievements you're going to have in accomplishment, in whatever you do, whether your job, business, your family matters, finances, God is going to multiply. 
people are going to be drawn to you because they see something extraordinary in your life now it's a lifelong journey of growth and achievement so it's not a quick fix right rome was not built in a day right so we need to understand it is a journey and it's never too late we can't say oh today i'm 50 or 60 or 70 no it's never too late god knows he says i will not call you home until i after you i finish with you on earth you know you have completed the run the race and that for me right so if you feel i'm 70 and i feel i'm not even where he's going to say okay god say i'm going to don't worry you're going to be living for 90 years old or whatever 100 years old whatever it is it's going to take him to accomplish but he'll keep you in the perfect health right perfect frame of mind to be able to accomplish things you know i love what one of the things i love about Psalm 92 I love I, this is a declaration I make every day from I think so 12 to 15 and I think one of the I think is 14 he says you know even as I age I am bearing much fruit I am fl- fresh and flourishing you know and uh, that's what it's all about so don't worry about your age focus on what God wants to do through your life right and when you are always and when you are ways please the lord he will even make your enemies be at peace with you how good is that when you you know if you start reflecting and you start growing and you start pleasing god in everything that you do he will even make your enemies be at peace with you that's a promise that's a promise from god right and finally you know you will have greater wisdom stage and favor with god and man right i love this this verse because even jesus when he walked this earth the son of man he had greater wisdom stage and favor with god and man and the same thing we can have right so why don't you want this why wouldn't you want it to have greater wisdom stage and favor with god and man right wherever you put your hand you're going to flourish you're going to walk in the overflow you're going to live an abundant life right and you're going to be such a blessing to your family your spouse your children and your other family members to those god brings along you you're going to be truly the salt and light and you're going to be really in a place where people are going to see you know amazed with the achievement that you got accomplished and they're just going to ask you how can you do all these things simple it's the grace of god because you know he is doing it through me right because i'm obedient to him i'm so i'm spending time with him i'm drawn to you know i'm led by him and i'm allowing him to work through me to be take me to where he wants me to be right and, and that's what it so this is some you know just a, a short presentation i hope this is meaningful i hope this is you know makes sense to you guys and now let's go into the in, you know the questions for the breakout session okay so i put the wheel of life there and i'm just three questions you can take a picture and or you know we can just uh, talk about it where are you in the seven areas you know score 1 for list where you're least satisfied and 10 where you're very satisfied so there are seven areas you can just put down uh, each one where you are 1 to 10 so that you this is for your own self assessment it is not you know you know that is doesn't matter where even if you're you know 1 or 10 it is just your gives you an opportunity to know assess where you are now and where you need to go to be in that place where god you you're going to be uh, in a in a place where you know you are now uh, flowing with the lord you know doing ex- exceptionally well in every aspect of your life okay and from the th- from the seven choose three that you feel god's leading you to work next year it doesn't have to be the lowest you know not just pick the ones it can be the best whatever it is that god is putting in your heart just look at it say okay is it is it i need to be better physically do i need to look at my finances do i need to work on my family my my family life quality whatever it is right just choose three and then imagine how these areas can be improved through growth in 2021 just visualize it where do you see right it's like faith you know hebrews 11 one says faith is unseen but it is there is real so you can to visualize yourself to be where you want to be 
So these are the three questions that we're going to go into the breakout session. Uh, so take a picture. <laughs>